Hey, welcome back. As you saw, this Xbox automatically turns on when power is applied without pressing either the power or eject buttons. I got this Xbox recently from Savers for $6 with a 25% discount and it is in really good condition compared to the other Xboxes I've been finding at Savers. Listen closely and you can hear that the tray is stuck. Also, this Xbox only turns off when pressing the eject button and also only turns back on with the eject button as the power button does not respond to presses. Pressing the eject button after the unit is on turns the unit back off. In short, I have an Xbox with malfunctioning power and eject buttons with a stuck disc tray. You have found a Sega Holic where ESD safety is a top priority. This is episode 67, Xbox Savers Rescue Part 1, Clock Capacitor Removal. Underneath is the manufacture date, which is September 10, 2003. And according to the Xbox revision table, this is a version 1.4. For the surgery, two screws hidden by labels need to be exposed. I'm pressing in the area where the screw is to outline the area that needs to be cut with an X-Acto knife. I'm using a spudger with blunt edges to lift the rubber feet, only peeling back until the screw underneath is exposed, making sure the spudger gets underneath the adhesive of the foot. The six K screws are T20 torque screws, so you need a T20 driver. I got these long security Torx bits from AliExpress. This Craftsman ball handle I got from Amazon and is a close replica of the Vessel ball handle drivers I prefer to use. The ball handle makes driving and removing screws that much more comfortable. With the screws removed, upper case can be lifted off, exposing the hard drive and DVD drive, along with the IDE cable. A T10 driver is needed for the screw underneath the IDE cable that holds down the hard drive. A spudger is used to remove the hard drive power cable, using the ridge on the connector and the hard drive itself for leverage. For the IDE cable, Push the spudger between the wire and the plastic and carefully push out. With the hard drive power cable freed from the clips, the hard drive can be lifted straight out. This Xbox has the 10 gigabyte Seagate hard drive. These two screws are also T10 torque screws and with them removed, the DVD drive can be lifted out. With the main board exposed, remove all the wire connectors connected to the board. The screws that hold down the main board are all T10 Torx screws and are easily spotted. There's the location of the evil clock capacitor. Neutralize the evil capacitor juice with some baking soda and water solution. 
you can twist the capacitor off if you don't have a desoldering iron. I'm using flux to make the desoldering a bit easier. Here's a closer look at the failed clock capacitor. And here's more clock capacitors pulled off previous Xboxes that I worked on. This one is notable for how deformed this one got. What these capacitors have in common is they were all made by Power Store. While cleaning the rest of the electrolytic fluid up, several components started coming off. Hopefully they are only part of the clock capacitor circuit. So if you have an Xbox that is not a 1.6, as those do not have a clock capacitor, don't procrastinate and remove them now. Anyways, part two of this fix will be released soon, addressing the power and eject button issues. So if you haven't subscribed, please do so. Aloha.